All right, y'all. So uh, this sure caught my eye the other day. Axios says that Trump believes he will be convicted in January 6th trial, plots how, how to run as a convicted GOP nominee. So let's dive into this. This is That's an interesting fact that he thinks he's toast. He thinks they're going to find him guilty. Behind the curtain, Trump's conviction scenario. Former President Trump is breezing to the GOP nomination, but in private, he's bracing for the genuine possibility that he'll be the first convicted felon in U.S. history to represent a major party. Sources tell us Trump believes he'd likely be convicted if the January 6th case comes to trial later this spring in Washington. By the way, that's why he's stonewalling, trying to postpone it. If that's delayed, he could face a guilty verdict in the Manhattan hush money case. Trump thinks he could still win the White House, partly by making daily theatrical appearances whenever courts are hearing his four cases, totaling 91 felony charges. But his advisors worry independence will be turned off by a conviction in a jury trial. Oh, you don't say. You don't say. It's amazing that they, even they've realized that. There's only good for the hardcore base. U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin, who is presiding over the January 6th case, has been tough on Capitol rioters, tried in her court, and has signaled she'll cut Trump no breaks. Jurors will be drawn from D.C., which is overwhelmingly Democratic. Some Trump lawyers once saw it as highly likely that the case would come to trial before the Republican convention in Milwaukee in July. But with all their maneuvering, including claiming that the former president is immune from prosecution, a delay is looking more likely by the day. The case was to begin March 4th, but the trial has now been dropped from a public court calendar. The Washington Post reported Thursday appeals could push the trial into late spring or summer. <clears throat> and the closer a trial date gets to Election Day, the less likely it is to occur. What's now more likely, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, who has accused Trump of buying the silence of porn star Stormy Daniels, may fill the vacuum by beginning his trial as soon as March 25th. Bragg has begun trying to add urgency and heft to his case by rebranding it as as election interference, the New York Times reported last week. Look, I get what he's trying to do there, but the fact of the matter is his case is just simply the weakest by its very nature. And so it shouldn't go first. Jack Smith should go first. Um, Fannie Willis should go first. His case should not be the first, but it is going to be the first. And that sets up a situation which is more favorable for Trump. I mean, they got to get this thing handled and taken care of, and they have to do it preferably before... Election Day, but definitely before inauguration. Those two cases in D.C. and Manhattan are the two likely to have the juries most hostile to Trump. The other two are in Georgia and Florida. We're told Trump plans to attend his trials in person most days, as has been his recent practice for recent court proceedings. That by itself would mean a massive change in the rhythms of a presidential campaign. Nominees typically spend their days trying to sway voters, not jurors. He'll rail against the judge, the charges, and the timing. Part of this would be true anger, according to people who talk to him, but a big part of, of the courtroom theatrics would be political. Guys, We've talked about this time and time again. He really does feel like I'm I probably won't win these cases. But he's trying to turn a legal loss into a political victory. By he won't say anything in court, but then when he goes out of the courtroom, he goes to the steps and talks to the media and goes off and acts like this is unfair and that's unfair and this is rigged and this is a witch hunt and I'm the most innocent man in history and so he's trying to he knows in the courtroom where facts matter. He's screwed. But outside of the courtroom he could spin it so that the facts don't matter. And now this is verification that this is exactly what his mindset is. This is verification that that's how he's approaching it. Trump feels certain the more voters think this is a political pile on, the better he'll do. So look for Trump to continue to groan, moan, and bemoan, then hit the TV cameras parked outside. One ally explained that by spending so much time in court, Trump is, make a virtue, is making a virtue of necessity. Quote, you can't be defensive or never talk about it because that just makes you look guilty, the ally said. Your only option is to play it up. That, look, that's true. He is a master manipulator, and we're watching it in full time. The fact that he's leading Biden in all these polls, even though he has 91 criminal charges, any other politician would be done. But he has no shame, and he's a total bull in a china shop, and he just plows ahead. What we're hearing, Trump's team feels certain that the indictments helped him own the GOP primary field. That's true. Each new set of charges brought a surge in donations and a bump in the polls. That's true. But that's just the Republican base. Trump advisors say he was energized by the fight when he first launched his campaign. He didn't have a battle cry like build that wall in 2016. Now he has a theory of the case. Defeat the corrupt establishment, the deep state, as he puts it. Despite Trump's bluster, there's real trepidation among his advisors about what a conviction would mean. The Trump team comforts itself that independent-minded voters won't like the idea of a Democratic administration prosecuting the Republican nominee. A source close to Trump's team said, When things shift to the general election dynamic with razor-thin margins and you're trying 
to convince people who are unhappy with President Biden but are deeply skeptical of Trump personally, a conviction doesn't help persuade those people. In private, Trump lashes out at prosecutors, raging that once again the system is rigged against him, and his team has tried every possible legal maneuver to delay the trials. If he really thought it was a good thing, he wouldn't be so unhinged, the source said. Polls show voters, especially swing voters, will view Trump differently if he's convicted by a jury of his peers. In seven swing states that will make up the most consequential fall battlegrounds, a Bloomberg Morning Console poll out this week found more than half of registered voters would be unwilling to vote for Trump if he were convicted of a crime. That's 53%. Or sentenced to prison, 55%. Which, by the way, let me just pause to point out, those numbers used to be even higher than that. They were over 60% said, I'd never, if, you know, if he's behind bar, what are we talking about here? Of course I can't vote for him. But over time, that number has dropped and dropped and dropped. So it's still a majority that say, if he gets convicted, I'm out. But that that's a moving number. Like, it keeps going down, being more favorable to Trump. So that also is a little worrisome. A poll of six swing states by the New York Times and Siena College in October found 6% of voters would switch their votes to Biden if Trump were convicted and sentenced, enough potentially to decide the election, the Times reports. But Trump's hold on the GOP could prove impregnable even to conviction. A national Yahoo News YouGov poll out Thursday found that 72% of Republicans and Republican-leading voters think any conviction would be an unfair outcome meant to damage Trump politically. Uh, this is Biden's big bet. The belief inside the White House is that many voters won't vote for a convict, especially if the case is about the storming of the U.S. Capitol and attack on cops. So, look, I, I, t I actually tend to agree with the notion that if he's found guilty, if he's convicted, he's not going to win. He's already uh, just repellent to independent voters. We've seen that in every single election post-2016. Um, but if he's not convicted, I think he's the favorite. And we genuinely don't know if there will be a conviction before Election Day or before Inauguration time, right? So we're, we're betting on the timeline speeding up. And I don't know if we're going to get that. And so then you, if you have just a straight-up race between Trump and Biden, and there is no conviction yet. There is no guilty verdict. The cases haven't really come to a conclusion. Then Biden's got a lot to worry about. And it's actually very interesting that they say in this that they're depending on a conviction. Because that says a lot about how weak Biden is, doesn't it? But it's also interesting that Trump seems to know, oh yeah, I'm in trouble. And I'm gonna, he's going to be found guilty on at least some of the 91 criminal charges. It's just a matter of when the fuck does it get done? Speed it up a little. Speed it up. I mean, that's where we're at. We are in totally uncharted territory in this country, man. And I fear that political violence is likely because, and no matter how, I could play this out in seven different ways, right? Like what happens from here to election day to inauguration, et cetera. And none of them, none of them seem good. They all seem terrifying. They're all, you know, we're up shit's creek without a paddle type stuff. So I don't know. Uh, look, I think the cleanest approach here is, and this is wishful thinking, I don't think this is going to happen. It's possible, but definitely not likely. The cleanest scenario is the very conservative Supreme Court comes out and says, I think Maine is right. I think Colorado is right. He violated Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. Try to do an insurrection. He can't hold office anymore. Sorry, we're just upholding the plain face reading of the law. Trump, you, you're kicked off the ballot. You can't run. That would be the cleanest. Because in that scenario... Yes, his people would be pissed. Yes, they would protest. There might even be some riots, right? But I think it would just be temporary, and I think it would be a big deal that it would be the massively conservative court that said it. In the same way that the even MAGA-appointed judges threw Trump's 60-plus cases out of the courtroom when he tried to overturn the last election, it, there were conservative judges, there were far-right judges who were like, sorry, you got nothing here. If a very conservative Supreme Court says it, that could rip off the Band-Aid quickly. But, you know, again, I think that's unlikely. So we're just going to have to watch it all play out and be terrified at the same time. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.